This meeting is being recorded. All right. All right. I think we're good to go. So hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, on behalf of the TLBAA Beef Committee, I want to welcome you to our quarterly uh, webinar. Each quarter, we will be hosting one of these with a different beef-related educational topic. Um, as crazy as it may seem, beef is sometimes overlooked in certain aspects of the longhorn industry. Uh, but we're working hard to educate folks on how it can be a benefit to your herd, your health, and your wallet. Um, so go check out the TLBAA uh, beef page. That's TLBAA.org for information about our registered longhorn beef program. Whether you're already a TLBAA member looking to start a beef program or someone who's looking to uh, just get some lean and delicious beef uh, for your family, there's something there for everyone. Today we're going to be talking on the subject of processing and getting the most out of your cattle. I'd like to welcome Mike Crawford with Local Cuts Meat Company in Zephyr, Texas. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Um, I'll turn it over to you and we'll have a presentation and then we can do some Q and A at the, at the end. Great. Well, thanks, Andrew. Uh, so I, I wanted to start off by, by really uh, bringing up three important uh, topics or points um, to start this, this uh, presentation off. And I, uh, I wanted to start uh Number one, you know, any beef program, just like uh, when you got in and 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 first purchased your two, you know, starting with how many ever longhorns that you purchased, you got to have a plan, and and uh, that's extremely important. Uh, from that plan, you want to look at how you can maximize your your revenue for uh, selling beef, and then the third point I want to uh, uh, talk about is partnering with a with a processor. So let's talk about the first point: <clears throat> establishing a plan. Um, you know, you really have to decide. You know, where you're going to market. You know, who you're going to sell to, and that may may be anything from selling to friends and families, uh, or selling into a farmers markets. Um, or uh, doing direct consumer farm to uh, farm to door or, or uh, um, uh, uh, direct to consumer, um, and uh, which is uh, using social media and Facebook to to market yourself, or selling to uh, restaurants or retail outlets as well. So I think that's the thing is 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 being able to have Put that plan together. You got you've got to source your cattle, and I think that's a great place to start with on any beef program. This is a great place to where you can sell your coals, or you can uh, you can uh, um, not sell your coals. You can basically use your coals uh, as your meat inventory, or your bull calves, or even being able to source from from other breeders uh, and buying uh, cull cows from them. So I, I think that's that's what's uh, extremely important uh, initially starting out is is figure out what your plan is. <clears throat> so going to the next slide, uh, the key thing is is maximizing your revenues, and I think this is where it's really important as 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 it relates to to longhorn cattle. Uh, there's a <clears throat> there's a big uh, misnomer that, you know, longhorn cattle have, they produce or they can, uh, they have great ground beef, but, but I've found personally that you can sell all the cuts and, you, you know, uh, premium cut cuts deliver premium prices and you should be able to have a, a premium price, uh, on your, on your mid cuts, your ribeyes, your, your uh, tenderloins or fillets, <clears throat> you know, all the way down. And that's where I think it's really important <clears throat> is that you're gonna be able to sell it all. 
And that's what, what I think your strategy should be as well. Not only selling the skull, and, and, uh, the, uh, but all the way to the oxtail, to the, to the actual tail of the animal. And <clears throat> there's so many opportunities, so many trends that are taking place. Um, you know, with bone broth, there's, you know, you have all your different bones, marrow bones, knuckle bones, um, to, to uh, be able to sell into those. But then <clears throat> even simple soup bones or rib bones uh, are a, a huge opportunity. Other trends that are out in the, in the market pl marketplace is asobuco, which is your hind shanks and fore shanks that have a marrow bone inside them. So it's really coming in with the understanding that you should, you should be selling the entire animal. Uh, like I say, from skull to oxtail. Um, that's where it, it's so important to, uh, in terms of maximizing the revenue, because uh, consumer appeal is extremely important. And that's where packaging uh, has to be as good or better than what you're seeing, what the consumer would see when they're going to the grocery stores. And that's so, so the, the packaging should have that same kind of look and feel that consumers uh, feel comfortable with, just as if you know, you're selling your product in uh, a grocery store outlet. And I think that's where, again, talking about consumer appeal, provide a story, put a story together that, that really will resonate uh to to consumers and to your targets and talking about health benefits uh talking about nutritional facts and and info that's that's uh available and and even bringing it down that you know um when you're when you're selling your beef you know you you can you can tell the consumer um that it's local you know where it's coming from and it's versus um, buying it out at a grocery store in a corp, corporate farming type of scenario. And my last point, going to the next slide, is it's really important to, to partner with a processor. And, and what I mean by that is, <clears throat> especially we're, we're talking about longhorn cattle. So the first thing is, the the processor uh, needs to be longhorn friendly, uh, and what that what that means is that there should be no doubt that you can bring your cows uh, to that processor. They're not going to cut the the horns off. They're not going to put um, you know uh, restrictions on the length of the horns. Okay, those are things that that are you know, those are table stakes right there as far as I'm concerned. The The other extremely important thing is, is that um, I would partner with, with a facility that is, is federally inspected so you can sell your product anywhere in the United States. And if, if you have in some states, uh, as an example, in Texas, you have stated, state inspection facilities and um, that means you cannot sell your meat uh, outside of Texas. And that's, again, this is a, a great opportunity when, when you're out there selling in the, in the marketplace, you should be able to sell your, your meat and ship it anywhere. And um, the processor, it should, be, it should all be about your way. Um, you know, in today's environment, the... It's not, it's not from a, a processor standpoint. This is, this is the, these are the cuts that I can provide you and that's it. You should be going to them and working with them as a partner and they should be open to allowing you to customize your cuts the way you want them to be cut. And that processor should also be able to provide you <clears throat> with what I call value added products. So you can take your you can take your ground beef and just not only selling it as ground beef, but you can sell it. You can sell it as uh, hamburger patties. 
which can be anywhere from a quarter of a pound to a third of a pound to a half a pound, uh, and then being able to um, provide, um, you know, summer sausage or spicy ground beef, um, Italian beef, snack sticks, German sausage, all these other value-added products um, that allow you to increase your margin. Uh, again, I think the, the quality of the, the packaging is, is extremely important in today's environment, especially because consumers, we all have gone to the food channels and we, um, you know, so many consumers are getting educated so that they are interested in, in coming in and, and having different cuts of, of beef that they can use. But the, the quality of the packaging, I think, is, is actually critical to uh, a, a, you know, a sustained revenue stream out there in the marketplace, okay? The processor should also be able to assist you and provide you with label labeling, which you should be able to customize and, and be able to brand to your, uh, to whatever um, name that you want to have associated with your beef. And it's going through the processor should be able to work with the USDA and getting those labels approved uh, and, and putting any claims in. As an example, uh, many of uh, uh, the Longhorn producers that, that we're currently working with um, have that registered Texas Longhorn beef producer. And so those claims can be put on your on your labels to be included with your with your beef cuts. And then turning to the next slide. Okay, so so here this is this is really important from a beef producer standpoint in talking about um, what your yields are. So uh, as an example. I just want to share with you, if you take and you've got a longhorn that's coming in and it has a live weight of a thousand pounds, okay? When that animal is then processed, and when I'm, what I mean by that, the animal's been harvested, it's uh, been skinned, gutted, and split, it is weighed, and there is a, and what we call a hang weight. And that hang weight is, basically going to be somewhere around 50% of the live weight. And that's because, and it's, and it's that yield at 50% is really because of the head and, and the horns are going to be a little bit heavier than a regular beef cow. So regular beef cow, you could, your yields on, um, on a thousand pound would be at 60 per 60 to 62 percent um, on the longhorn it's 50 percent so we go from a thousand pounds on live weight to 500 pounds on the hang weight <clears throat> and once you go through and you process that animal by uh, cutting out making the various uh, cuts the more bones that you include like bone-in ribeyes which i strongly recommend bone-in roasts <clears throat> Also buco is an example. Then it'll, it'll allow you to bring your yield up to, um, you know, somewhere around 60 to 65 percent, which allows you to bring home in terms of the actual meat you you would be <clears throat> delivering would be somewhere between 300 and 300, 350 pounds. So that's where you you look at your yields and you understand that. Um, and we can go and we can talk about that in, in more depth, but it gives you a sense of how much meat you can expect to receive if, if that longhorn's coming in at a thousand pounds on the hook. All right. So let's go in and we'll talk about the cut sheet <clears throat> and to start it right off, um, you know, when you, when you look at that cut sheet, some of the things that are real important uh, <clears throat> is when you talk when when I talk about the variety meats, that's the liver, heart, oxtails, tongues, 
cheat meat. <clears throat> this, this is, again, a great place where you can sell this in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, a lot of different restaurants will, will are interested in these variety meats. And you have a lot of health conscious people that are uh, very interested in, in these types of organ meats as well. Then when you go to the brisket, realize that a longhorn brisket is not going to look like a brisket that you'll see at the grocery store. They're going to come in a, a lot smaller. Typically, um, you know, brisket on a, on a longhorn is going to be uh, somewhere between three to six pounds in weight. And it's just not going to be as, as fatty. So uh, don't think that that's going to be, um, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to look similar to what your beef cow uh, or, or beef cattle look like, like I say, in the grocery store. You can do, you, with the brisket, you can either have it whole, <clears throat> which I would recommend, especially for longhorns. You can split it, uh, and split it means going lengthways, or you can, or you can cut it in half, which Again, there's different ways to do that. Some, uh, if, if the brisket weighs less than three pounds, I would probably grind it. <clears throat> Other cuts are, of course, your flanks and your skirts. Um, those, that's where your uh, fajita meat comes from. And uh, for the longhorns, I would always recommend that you uh, tenderize uh, these two types of cuts. Your tri-tip <clears throat> is on the top of the round. Again, um, I would leave that whole or grind it. Uh, again, uh, it will probably come around, that tri-tip will probably weigh somewhere around two pounds. <clears throat> when you go to your, your different cuts, like I say, you can either have, when you're going through and, and you're uh, deciding whether it's going to be T-bones, New York strips, or tenderloins, <clears throat> that T-bone consists of, is just a bone that, that attaches, that is attached to the, to the tenderloin and to the New York strip. And <clears throat> so you're, you're either going to give up that tenderloin or that New York strip to make that T-bone. Uh, in the case if the animal is over 30 months of age, then you, you, you can't keep that uh, bone. So you're gonna either get New York strips or you're gonna get tenderloins, okay? And I would strongly recommend when you're going through these cuts, you establish what you, know, it, what you want the cuts to, be, to weigh. So six ounces or eight ounces, uh, is what I strongly recommend. <clears throat> and then you can either put them in one pound pa one, one package or you can put two to a package. What I would recommend is probably putting two to a package so you get a one pound, uh, you get a one pound package of, of uh, beef. Another thing that's really important there, especially with the fillets, uh, bacon wrapping, wrapping them just really sets up that, that premium cut. And you, you know, again, from a from a, a cuts per uh, standpoint, you can leave it. You can either leave the tenderloin whole, or you can, like I say, you can cut them in in uh, six or eight ounce sizes. So turning, continuing on with the uh, with the next slide <clears throat> on different cuts as you go through that cut sheet, you know, you can do your ribeyes. Your ribeyes can either bone it be bone in or boneless. Uh, uh, experience uh, with the Longhorns, I would just strongly recommend that that uh, you go with a bone in. It just adds additional flavor, and it really makes that that uh, that piece of meat look uh, extremely pretty. Uh, your sirloins, you can either go bone in or bone less. <clears throat> Depends on how you want to sell it. Uh, you can sell them in. 16 ounce sizes or eight ounce uh, pieces, whichever way uh, you know you feel you want to sell your product. Um, 
the short ribs are really for smoking and um, and they're great uh, again as a uh, smoking or I wouldn't say a grilling type of product, but more as a smoking type of product. Then you have your your different, um, you know, you have your chuck steak or chuck roast, and from from that chuck, you can get, like I say, you can get chuck eye steaks, you can get chuck steaks, or you can get chuck roast, uh, bone in or boneless. Again, if you if if you want to increase your yield, uh, going with, with a bone in. Uh, chuck roast is really good, and again, these these uh, the chuck roasts are extremely flavorful uh, from Longhorns. The same is true with your with your arm roasts, okay? Um, and then your flat iron steaks, which go great, um, uh, you know, with a with a salad. Again, it's a lean piece of meat, but it's extremely flavor flavorful. Again, you've got your round roast, or you can go with round round steaks. You've got different choices. Uh, one of the things I have included there are your cutlets, which are six or eight ounces. They're extremely um, tasty, especially when you go to your beef cutlets. You want those to be tenderized. And <clears throat> what I normally say is, is that you you really want to go with something like a six ounce cutlet and put, a, you know, four to a package. Um, so you've got one and a half pounds per package. Again, they're extremely good uh, as chicken fried steak, which is a popular cut, of course. Yeah. Especially in Texas, but you know, throughout the, throughout the US. And then finally to the, the last slide, <clears throat> Just, uh, you know, again, your rump roast, you can, uh, you have different choices there. Again, it's a, it's a very good uh, roast uh, that can be used um, uh, and extremely flavorful. Other choices, like I say, the Asso Buco, or uh, which is the, the different uh, four shanks and hind shanks. I talked about soup bones. Stew meat again. These are it's you. You can basically uh, take that's that same uh, cut from the from the round or the rump, and you can sell it as beef tips, which are are smaller uh, cube meat stew meat, which is slightly larger, or you could go with beef kebabs. Again, those are are three different types that you can use. You go, of course, you've got your ground beef. If you want your chili meat, that's just a, a more coarser uh, grind than, than what you would get from your ground, ground beef. And then finally, I talked about the hamburger patties, um, you know, which can come, you should be able to get them in anything from a quarter pound to a third of a pound to a half a pound. And <clears throat> I'm just going through this briefly so you get a, a sense of what you would expect uh, when you're going in with a with a processor um, to um, when they start talking to you about this cut sheet. But right now I'm going to open it up for uh, additional questions and and we'll see where everything goes. All right, Mike, can you hear me? I can. All right. I uh, got a couple of questions for you here. Um, let's see if I can pull them up. So, I mean, you kind of covered it, but what are a few critical questions we should ask a processor that we are planning to work with? Okay. Uh when you're when you're going in there and talking with them, I think the first thing, um, you know, especially what we, you're 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 coming in with Longhorn cattle, okay, and if that processor is even slightly hesitant about uh, or 
pushes back on um, here's what our requirements are for horned cows, um, then I, I think you need to keep on looking until you find a processor that is, is going to absolutely welcome uh, the longhorn cattle in and, uh, you know, and has, has no problems uh, with, with getting those cuts. Um, from there, then I think that, that the, the other critical thing I would ask, I'd ask to, to see what their packaging looks like, okay? And make sure, uh, you know, that you, that, that it's going to be packaged because packaging is, is like eye candy. I mean, it's so critical uh, when, you're, when you're selling in, even, you know, especially at consumer level, they want to make sure that it, that it looks pretty. And uh, so I think that's, that's another critical question I would ask, uh, ask the processor, if they're, if they're putting it in uh, paper wrap, again, I think that I'd be looking at, at other processors. Um, and I would say those are, uh, extremely important. Then uh, going to the, from there, I would, I would absolutely then go in and talk to them about what experience they have there as it relates to the butchers. Because the butchers have to have, you have to have experienced butchers that know how to cut meat and know how to cut it well, because um, there's a big difference between a grain fed uh, beef cow that comes in and, and is being cut up versus uh, a longhorn cow. And um, again, they should be able to answer those types of qu questions comfortably um, to, you know, so that you feel comfortable that they know how to, how to, uh, uh, cut up that that longhorn beef as as well as possible. Uh, finally, I would absolutely uh, ask to to uh, get a tour of the facility and look at it and look to make sure uh, it should be a, a very clean environment um, where where safety is key um, across the board. And I think that those are some of the basic questions I would ask starting out. Great. So yeah, it sounds like just with most things, communication is key. <laughs> Don't be afraid to communicate with your processor. No, no, that, you know, it's not a one way street. So again, you, you know, I, I would say that the, besides growing the, the longhorn cattle, I mean, the, that, that beef processor is, you know, you, you should look at them as your partner. OK, because it should be a definite two way street back and forth so they can they can help you and you can you can give them guidance on what you see, um, you know, your your customers are wanting. Great, Great. thanks. Um, another question here. So you mentioned. Uh, a 30 month limit. So on those bone in cuts, um, I'm sure most of us have heard of that 30 month limit. What's that about? Uh, and what cuts does it apply to? Yeah. So, so the only thing, the only place that it really truly applies and, and the reason why that came about uh, was because of the uh, mad cow disease that occurred in Europe. Okay. And uh, so the USDA put a stipulation that any cow, cattle that are over 30 months of age, uh, you can't keep the backbones. You can keep other bones like the leg bones, uh, your, your, any of those uh, leg bones that are, that are there, but anything, any bones that are along uh, the, the um, backbone. And it only really impacts if you're looking for, if you're, if you're wanting T-bone cuts, okay, which is that bone that uh, comes with the, uh, 
the tenderloin in the New York strip. But you, if if it's over 30 months of age, all that's saying is, is that you can still get your New York strips and you can still get your fillets. You just can't get your T-bone. Perfect. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, and it's an either or. I mean, you know, you you're gonna get the meat. It's just depending on what the cut is. The cut is either going to be a T-bone or it's going to be a New York uh, uh, strip and a filet. Perfect. Uh, any suggestions for an age or a weight for processing? Yes, Longhorn. absolutely. On longhorns, what you really want to get them, um, you know, the, the ideal weight for longhorn is somewhere around a thousand pounds, okay? Around a thousand pounds. Now you can go a little bit lower uh, down to 800 to 900 pounds, but uh, what I've found the ideal weight of a longhorn would be, would be a live weight of about a thousand pounds. Great. Um, that brings up a question that I had personally. Um, when we talked before, you had mentioned something about ideal hanging times for a longhorn and how it differs from different, uh, maybe fattier breeds of cattle. So what's the difference that we should be talking to our processors about uh, on hang times? Uh, I guess yeah. Right so for a longhorn that, yeah, especially on longhorns, because longhorns just, again, they don't have, they don't, they, they're not going to come in. They're not going to be super fatty. And um so what I recommend, especially when when you when they come in, usually they're they're coming in and they're they're fairly lean, they're fairly lean, and I would say, uh, you know, on a grain fed, what we usually the standard uh, aging is fourteen days. With longhorns, it should be seven to ten days. Um, otherwise, it brings your utilization down because there's not any. It, 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 it's not going to, all it's going to do is it's going to, uh, if you age it uh, over 10 days, that you're just losing utilization, you're losing meat. And so um, the best aging, I, like I say, is, is seven to 10 days. All right. Uh, last question. Is there any notable difference in the leanness of longhorn beef? Or I guess we can say, is there any notable differences in longhorn beef? Most of us know about the, you know, they tend to be a little bit leaner. Right. Well, the, the thing about, the thing about longhorns is there's, there's a, there's a lot, a lot of differences there. Okay. Um, your longhorns are just going to be, um, they're going to be higher in nutrition. They're going to have, uh, they're going to be lower in cholesterol. They're going to be higher in, in your good omega fatty acids and uh, lower in your cholesterol, the, your, uh, your, your saturated fats. Okay. And it, it is, it's, it's a marketable difference. Um, in terms of of seeing um, beef that's coming, longhorn beef that's that's coming out because it is so nutritious, and there's been um, some uh, a lot of third party testing to, that backs that up and substantiates those claims, and uh, and it actually tastes better <laughs> because you're you're getting a, a great flavorful type of beef. Uh, that is, is typically not going to be, uh, you know, you're coming from your floppy ear grain fed beef cows. Okay. And, you know, you can substantiate and you can back up those claims, uh, that, that are absolutely available out there. Um, like I say, from, from third party test groups. And I think, TLBAA has some of that information. If they don't, um, they uh, you can they can probably reach out to me and uh, because I've I've personally done some third party testing 
of uh, almost all the longhorn cuts at one point in time. All right, Mike. Well, I think that's all we got for now. Um, okay, well, the, the only been... thing I just I, yes. I want to close is that, you know, get out there and, and uh, look at your processor. Um, realize that that one of the things that's that's so critical is, as, as you mentioned, Andrew, is, ha is communicate with them, go back and forth. You may not get it right the first couple of times exactly, but if you're working with them and if that processor is open uh, and they sh and hopefully you'll be able to have that kind of relationship with them uh, so you can really put out the and sell the best, best beef uh, that's available out there. Perfect. All right, we actually did just have one more question come in, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, it says, can you repeat which cuts need tenderizing and how is that done? Yeah, sure, sure. So there's a there's a tenderizing uh, machine that should all processors should have. Okay. And so the 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 different cuts that I recommend you go through the tenderizer would be uh, your skirt steaks, your flank steaks, uh, of course, your beef cutlets, those, those particular cuts. And I would, especially for the longhorns, have them run it through uh, the tenderizer twice, okay? Again, that, that just helps it uh, in um, the tenderness um, so that, that you really, uh, um, can take advantage uh, of those specific cuts in getting them tenderized. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Well, this has been some great information. We really appreciate it. And we really appreciate your time today. Um, for the, if you're interested in the TLBAA's registered beef program, like I said, you can go on the TLBAA.org and check that out. Um, and this webinar has been recorded and we will be posting a link so that you can watch it after the fact on the website. And I think that will also be on YouTube. Um, so TLBAA.org and uh, yeah, lots of good stuff on there. Come check us out. And uh, Mike, did you want to, um, you run local cuts in Zephyr, Texas. Y'all have website, all that good stuff. Yes, we do. It's it's uh, localcuts.com. So you can go in and you can actually uh, see even more information. Uh, some of the typical questions that that we've run in or run into that that some of those answers that we've provided on our website. If again, if if that processor isn't giving you answers like that, uh, continue looking around. Perfect. Well, okay. thank you. And we're going to close it out. Thank you, everybody, for joining. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.